right here, I didn't do nothing. You didn't do anything? I didn't commit no murder. Fox 40 photojournalist Darren McQuaid was first on scene. He captured these moments right after the chaos. Darren McQuaid, he is live in the field with a live interview from the front lines. Have you found anybody alive up there that stayed back? Sir, are you looking to get your animals back? He wouldn't answer our questions, but neighbors confirmed that this is Charles Gore. When Fox 40 showed up with cameras rolling at his Auburn Road property, Gore was not happy to see us. Get out of here. It doesn't matter how much you fill them. They keep coming back. Potholes, that is. Always around. These chickens are about to experience freedom for the first time ever. The initial reaction would be shock. Step on the ground for the first time. Car tires look more like pancakes near Adobe Way in Woodland. 17 cars were vandalized over the weekend. I guess it would come out of my pocket on top of everything else. I just bought this car about two days ago and I was just driving around the block to test the shocks. So is the pot in the car huh? when you got it? Huh? There was a truck coming through the front, uh, the front window. We all knew smoking was dangerous. Just not this dangerous. Did it take the lump sum or the annuity? The lump sum. Yeah. 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 At our age. Yeah. Yeah. Right here. Uh huh. Carol makes Christmas tree ornaments by hand and plans on buying lots of supplies. He's back out of the. But what does a 79 year old man spend his winnings on? A dent. I'm pretty sure you can fix that for $600,000. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> they could put a whole body on it. <laughs> Betty Lara loved golfing with her husband, Larry. We just enjoy ourselves when we were playing. They played together every week. I know that he's, I'm not, just, I'm gonna see him again and not just in my dreams. Now, Betty practices alone in the backyard. Larry died from leukemia four years ago. Good morning, my love. <laughs> to somebody else that might sound a little crazy. They were high school sweethearts, married for 49 years. I just had a, an awful day. On Easter Sunday, yeah, it's terrible. Which happened to be Larry's birthday. She visited his grave. I get a little bit of peace because I can talk to a, a piece of ground. I just talk to a piece of ground and tell him I love him and I miss him. As she was leaving. I noticed my window was like in almost little shreds and stuff. Her car window was smashed, her purse taken. Absolutely devastated. I felt so violated. But there was only one thing she cared about. When I was a young girl, 13, <laughs> my brother gave that to me as a confirmation present. Her sacred heart of Jesus medal, seen in this picture. It had great sentimental value. If I could only get that back, I don't care about everything else. A sacred item stolen from a sacred place. Betty gave that medal to her husband before he left for Vietnam. I told him, I, this will keep you safe and it'll bring you home to me. And it did, it kept him safe and it brought him home to me. Betty hopes whoever stole the medal has a change of heart and does the right thing. I wish to God they would just turn it over to the police or put it in an envelope and give it to the police department in Citrus Heights, anything. This is a beautiful remembrance of a sad day. He was a go-getter, and you know, I miss him because he made he made work and fun. He needs to be honored. Officer Kevin Tan died on January 15th, 2013, and is the first Galt police officer to be killed in the line of duty. It was especially important to start a tradition. Don't like that word, but you know, to start something so that we can remember. It's more beautiful than anything we really imagined. Of course, we hope nobody else gets added to that. For the last I was on the perimeter when he was shot that day. I said, we need to do something for this officer. <laughs> Canine Yara was Officer Kevin Tan's partner. He was visibly upset during the service. Yaro, I think, still misses Kevin. I, I, every time I see him, I think he has a sad look in his, uh, in his eyes. When we had the original funeral, uh, the same thing happened. And the dogs, Jay, have a, seems to be a sixth sense of something going on. Hundreds of officers and residents came out to say goodbye and honor 
our heroes. I love you. We dearly miss him and we'll always love him. He'll never be forgotten. He put himself out to the community. We miss him. It's an unusual call for help in Orange Vale when fire crews had to get a horse named Phantom unstuck from an outdoor bathtub. They arrived on Bunting Court to find that horse lodged inside the tub. Photojournalist Darren McQuaid has that story and how it all ended. This place never surprises me. It, it produces all kinds of stories. Now Charles Campbell has one more story to tell. It all started with a frantic phone call from his wife. She says Phantom's fallen into the tub. Well, that sort of shocked me. And he wasn't the only one who was shocked. The 911 operator got a little confused because she says, she called her back and she said, your husband can't get out of the bathtub? And she says, no, it's my horse. We all know you can lead a horse to water, but forget about making him drink. The real problem is getting him out of the tub. Got a horse in the bathtub. Have you ever seen a horse in a tub before? No, they said that they hadn't either. You never know what you'll be responding to as a firefighter, but this was a first for Metro Fire. Some lumber in their trucks and they brought it out and then they pried, it, pried this out and basically just tipped the tub. Phantom was able to escape unharmed, but it was a scary 25 minutes for the horse and his owners. These are the kids, I mean, once your kids go away, your animals become your kids. The tale of the tub actually started as a love story. See what her tail's going up? She's in heat. She shouldn't be. She's an old lady. Initially, Phantom lost balance and fell into the tub while checking out a potential mate. Frisky. Yeah, it's getting too close to Valentine's Day. I guess I'll have to get one of those old folks tubs that has the door on it. <laughs> so it's a case of rubbernecking gone awry. Yeah. <laughs> Phantom is said to be doing just fine. Happy ending. There. All right. Turning back time by taking flight, a piece of World War II history is on display in the Sacramento region this Memorial Day weekend. And as Fox 40 photojournalist Darren McQuaid found out, you can relive history by climbing inside. They make it look simple, but it's not that quite that simple. Pre-flight so safety checks are nothing new for Colonel Bud Anderson. 116 missions. Anderson was an Air Force pilot more than 70 years ago, flying combat missions in World War II. I was a triple ace. I shot down 16 and a quarter <laughs> enemy airplanes. And people wonder, what do you do? You shoot down a quarter of an airplane? No, you share the, the, the kill with uh, three other guys my whole flight. At 94 years old, Anderson moves a little slower these days. <laughs> I've done this many times. He's taking a step back in history, flying in this historic B-17 bomber. The nickname for this airplane was the Flying Fortress because it had so much armament on it. It's sheer joy for one thing. You know, this is a pilot's dream to fly something like this. Aluminum overcast, as this plane is named, has a wingspan of over 100 feet and is powered by four 1,200 horsepower engines. And I still get that feeling. You kind of like, you know, you're you're there. You're 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 surrounded by the ghost of the young men that did that in the 40s, the teenagers. There were 10 men when they went down. That's 10 guys, you know. So, and uh, that's kind of what I remember about World War II. During the war, Anderson flew the P-51 Mustang, a plane that would escort the B-17 and protect it. How fast does this thing go? Oh, I don't know, 250, something like that. Anderson is a man that doesn't show a lot of emotion, but today, he couldn't help but smile. And after the flight, it, it's, it's like they're a different person. I mean, they're standing up straight, they're walking tall, they're excited, they're ready to go on a mission. In Rancho Cordova, Darren McQuaid, Fox 40 News.